Hi, this is Dr. Daniels and you are listening to Jamming with Jen. This is the Sunday, March 13th, 2022 edition. Yay! <laughs> and today's title is Inequality, the Key to Health and Happiness. And as always, think happens. But first, update on mom. Mom is doing great. She is settling into her new role in life, which is the person everyone cares for. So uh, everyone's stepping up and giving mom lots of positive feedback. And she is gracefully accepting this feedback and working on improving herself and walking better with her walker. We hope pretty soon that she won't even need that. So mom is just doing great. Next, our sponsor, yay, Vitality Capsules, regular and extra strength. Check out VitalityCycles.com to find out more about the internal cleanser that is gentle enough for everyday use. Yay. Next, Home Healers Course. Oh my goodness. So Home Healers Course, yay. Uh, again, that's also at VitalityCycles.com. And the Home Healers course is a course that I created to help people handle their health concerns in the privacy of their home and handle emergency conditions in less time than it takes for an ambulance to arrive and not ever have to worry about a hospital, a ambulance, doctor, clinic, or pharmacy. So check it out, Home Healers course, and just an amazing addition to your life. Just the information in the first 10 units has saved me personally hundreds of thousands of dollars in health insurance premiums, copays, and deductibles. So that is a major gift from me to you. Yes, it does cost money, but again, the profit margin for you is pretty steep. Also, uh, we have a live question and answer session that will be in April, and everyone purchasing a Home Helix course between, uh, actually for the past year, from January 2021 until March 30th will be invited at no additional cost to the live question answer where as always I will answer every last question. Yes. All right, that's all healers. Our sponsor. Ah, my progress. Mm. That's the topic of next week's uh, show and it'll be setbacks. How do you know when you've had one and what to do? So I'm still working on uh, my center splits and my Taekwondo, but uh, progress has uh, had a little bit of a setback due to uh, me overdoing it. So I am fine, but I've had to uh, take a break for a bit. Next is turpentine. I tell you, I cannot say enough good about turpentine. For that, go to VitalityCycles.com. You want to download the free, that's no charge, free report, Candy to Cleaner. And turpentine is the dis distilled oil from the sap of the pine tree. And once you experience the benefits of turpentine, you can understand why people <laughs> a long time ago worship trees. It is just that amazing. I had stopped taking turpentine for a while because I'd started ivermectin and I figured, okay, meh, ivermectin will probably just do the job. Although ivermectin has its benefits, for example, no more chin hairs. I have no idea where they went, but they're gone. I don't have even one, not a one. Smooth, smooth skin. Uh, moles shrinking and going away. It's amazing. But... It did not help my joints, so I had to go back to turpentine to have my easy, free-moving joints, no noise, no, no stiffness, nothing. So I take turpentine now about nah, three times a week, and I remake it once a month. So how do you take turpentine? Well, first of all, use a bottle that's labeled, so label your bottle. And then I use a uh, pipette, know your dose. My dose is half teaspoon, so I only go up to here, the neck of the pipette. And we'll do that right now. Just squeeze out and suck it up. 
Okay, there we go. And then you need a spoonful of sugar. As I say, the sound of music, it helps the medicine go down. And, well, we hope a most delightful way. All right, so that's about as much sugar as I use, which is a heaping teaspoon. As you can see, it can get a little bit sloppy. And we squirt that turpentine right on it. And as you can see, the sugar changes color. And you want to soak a fair amount of the sugar, but you don't want to soak all of it. So some of the sugar has remained free of turpentine. As you can see, that is the case here. I like to put some water in my mouth. You want to wash it down all the way down, at least to the bottom of your breastbone. And after that, you're good, you're good to go. Now, I even go so far as to label sugar, because there's a lot of things in the kitchen that are white and powdery. So you don't want to get that mixed up. All right. Then I always take a uh, shield chip. Now, I say always, but the truth of the matter is about five times a week. I'm going to use a different chopstick today because, well, I have a different chopstick. If it doesn't work, I'll use my old one. Now, you want 200 milligrams, which is about a quarter of a quarter teaspoon. In other words, not a lot. So this is clearly too much. This amount right here is clearly too much. This chopstick is way too robust. So I'm going to hit some of that off. And hit some of that off and just scrape it. And that is about 200 milligrams. And I put that in the water. As you can see, it does not readily dissolve. So we're going to put it aside. We're not going to stress ourselves. I wish I could blame the studio lights, but that's not the case. It's just the tropics. So I'm going to wipe off this perspiration. All right, I'm also going to wipe off this spilled sugar here. All right, there we go. Taking our turpentine, got the shield jet ready. Hey, what's with the shield jet? What's with the shield jet? Well, first of all, it's with the turpentine. I take a turpentine because it's a really powerful anti-parasitic agent. And um, what causes aging and wrinkles and gray hair and all kinds of just terrible stuff happening as we fall apart when we age. Yes, there's an element of malnutrition, but the worst thing is the parasites just literally nibbling away at us. And what happens with when you take turpentine is it just knocks down that population of parasites, just knocks it back, knocks it back, knocks it back, so you have a better quality of life while you are alive. And many people feel it helps them live longer. Certainly, I've observed uh, people living into their 90s check out my mother, 90 years old, and um, they're just fine. So I discovered turpentine many decades ago, and the whole story is at VitalityCycles.com. Now, um, shilajit, why take shilajit? This little tarry stuff. Yeah. So shilajit is actually a trace mineral deposit naturally occurring, and it's just scooped up, slapped in that little tub just for you. That's it. It's the total processing. Um, but these trace minerals are very important for people who live a modern life with things like flush toilets. Why is that? Because the cycle goes, you eat food, it passes through your body, and the minerals that you don't use, and minerals from, bad, from um, cells that are discarded and stuff, go out the bottom end. That poop is then used to fertilize plants, which are then filled with these trace minerals, which then you eat, and the cycle goes again. But if the poop is flushed down the drain, and the plants are fertilized with NPK, that's only three minerals, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, none of which are trace minerals, then your food is deficient in trace minerals. Or let's say you use veganics, you compost vegetables and fertilize with that. Again, you're not going to get the same mineral spectrum that you would get from your own waste being recycled to the plants. And this is why uh, mod with modern farming practices and lifestyles, shilajit is definitely necessary. 
Okay, that brings us, check, 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 check. yes, inequality. Inequality, the key to health and happiness. Yes, that's why you tune in, to get the shocking truth. <laughs> so we've heard a lot about equality. And every time I read anything, I talk about equality, one equality, one equality. I'm like, are they crazy? Are they crazy? The last thing anybody needs is equality. Uh, inequality is necessary to life. Let's just talk about how inequality is necessary to you even being able to watch the show, even to breathe, to for your eyeballs to move. So in your body, you have serious inequality. Let's talk about the body pH. In your body, your pH varies from 7.4 to 5. If every place in your body has the same pH, then you will die. That's it. Done. Game over. Uh, why is this? The pH of 7.4 in your blood with the pH of 5 in your muscles and tissues allows nutrients to go one way and waste to go another, in the other direction. Without this gradient or difference in pH, there would not be the movement of waste in one direction and the movement of nutrition in the other direction. And your blood circulating throughout your body couldn't do its job. It would be useless. So this is why you need inequality, in unequal pH. And the pH varies throughout your body by the location, for example. Normal pH of your tears is 5. Normal pH of your saliva, 5. Normal pH of your stomach, 1.7. Oof. So each part of your body has a different pH that allows it to function and interact properly with the blood circulating to it and with the other organs adjacent to it that it has to coordinate with. So pH, inequality, yay. What other inequalities do you have in your body? Well, you have a sodium inequality. This is huge. The sodium outside your cells is in your blood is 142 millimoles per liter. Units not important. But inside the cells, the salt concentration is 10 millimoles per liter. Units not important. What's important? What's important is inequality. Outside, sodium 142. Inside, 10. There is greater than a tenfold difference. And it is this difference in sodium that creates the electrical charge in your cell membrane and allows messages to be sent from your brain to your finger, allowing your finger to move. If we had equality, the message would never get to your finger, and if it did, your finger would not move. So, inequality in sodium, critical. Potassium, another big inequality. And potassium inside the cell is 140 and outside is 4.6. Both same units, millimoles, but the point is, again, a more than tenfold difference. In fact, 20-fold difference. So this is really important thing to understand. You do not want equality. Once you have equality, that's it. Done. Over. You're dead. So. Uh, equality is not something we strive for. <laughs> and health, to keep healthy, we want to maintain these inequalities. And the way to maintain these inequalities, it's super simple, is to make sure you drink enough water and to breathe deeply and frequently. Super, super simple. Also, by the way, salt your food to taste. Usually it's about that simple. But the point is, if you strive for equality, then you are actually destroying your health, destroying your energy, destroying your quality of life. So don't do it. What about diet? Well, we have eating, which is a good thing. We all enjoy that. But then there's fasting. So how does that work? Well, everyone fasts, I'll call it an obligatory fast, at night when you're sleeping. So when you're sleeping, you're fasting. You're not eating anything. That's not equality. So you're not supposed to eat every day, all day long, throughout the day and night. No, not eat at night. But also, there is something called fasting where you simply stop eating solids uh, for a day. Or for a day, maybe you'll stop eating 
meats or maybe you'll stop eating vegetables maybe you'll stop um, eating anything but water but what this fasting does is it creates an inequality and allows your body to cycle back and forth between doing and repairing doing and repairing so no matter what you do in your life you're spending your time um, exerting energy getting things done and that's fine but you need a repair period and sometimes the eight hours at night or ten hours might not be enough so that's when you take a day a week two days a week two days a month whatever seems to work for you and you do a fast and lately it's become um, fashionable to do uh, what's called intermittent fasting which basically comes down to eating um, once a day or eating in a narrow time spectrum of the day and you can read all over the internet where people have tried this and uh, I'll just summarize it for you oh my god major miracle I felt so great oops until sometimes it's a month sometimes it's a year sometimes it's two years I, said, I couldn't I, I wasted away. I was losing too much weight. Again, equality, bad thing. So even equality, although we worship it a lot of times, of habit is not good. So this intermittent fasting, it might be good for a period of time, and then you have to take a break from that and do something that's not intermittent fasting. That's inequality. To be even more clear about this is let's talk about being vegan for the sake of just discussion, that would mean eating uh, a diet of no dairy, no meat, and just eating vegetables. Nowadays we'll eat vegetable derived foods, which is a whole other matter, but let's not get into that. Let's just call it vegetables. Um, most people, when they switch to a vegetable only diet, feel awesome for a period of time, and then they start feeling worse. Why? Equality. That's not what's needed. Inequality. So you'd be vegan for a while, then do carnivore for a while, then do some vegan for a while, or carnivore for a while. Or what some people do is they'll do omnivore uh, five days a week and then just take a break uh, for one or two days and do the vegetables only or water only, whatever works. But the point is, inequality is where it's at. Inequality is where the health lies. So you can pick any diet you want, it doesn't matter. And you can follow that diet every single day, all day long, you will reach a point where the equality has created too much equality in your body and your health will suffer. And you'll have to back it up and do a lot of times the complement or the exact uh, everything different. So what I tell people to do in order to prevent this situation is to whatever diet you like the best. Do it for five to six days a week. If you like being vegan, great. Be vegan six days a week and then have a meat day. What if you're carnivore? Great. Be carnivore for six days a week, then have a vegetable day. And that way you can have the greatest amount of what you want, but you can use inequality to your benefit and have a very nice, uh, have good health, actually excellent health and a wonderful life. So inequality is the key. Oh, wait, we've got to talk about happiness. So I have decided to use inequality in my life rather aggressively. So I'm going to tell you the story with my dogs. To tell you with people, you might think, well, I'm a little insensitive. Talk about dogs. So uh, I have four dogs. Uh, they're not my dogs. They're just vicious dogs in the neighborhood who are mean, run around and bite people. I mean, that's the truth. And But now they have decided that, that they're going to be my friend and uh, they're going to try and please me and keep me happy and guard my house. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. So how did this happen? Well, I started giving them treats. There's four dogs. One dog, never give treats to. No, no treats for that. None. Other dog, very small treats. So I get a hot dog and I cut this hot dog into ten unequal pieces. So six of the pieces are small and four of the pieces are big. That's it. And initially, I gave big pieces only to one dog. So one dog got big pieces, 
Two dogs got small pieces and one dog got no pieces. What happened? Well, dog that got the big pieces was very happy. And I even uh, scratched him behind his ears as well. And so the other dogs went over to check him out and said, hey, you getting big pieces? And so they chatted and sorted out. And everyone realized this dog was getting big pieces. So then they decided, hmm, what do they have to do to get big pieces? And so they are working very, very hard to please me. Whether it's walking with me on my walks, wagging their tail, being nice, not barking at me. And what has happened is a whole dynamic here. And even the big dog, I even give him ivermectin once a month to make sure he stays in tip-top condition. Other ones, no, nothing for them. And so what, this, what has happened then is it has actually developed into the dogs who get the smaller treats are working very hard to see what they have to do to get those big treats. And then the ones that get no treats, they just decide, okay, we're just going to guard our house, hang out with the other dogs, the in crowd. And I even have four other dogs who are trying to kind of join the in crowd, but I've told them, nope, not for you. So by having the difference in size of treats, the dogs who are getting the smaller treats are basically thinking, hmm, how can I get the better treats? And everyone is behaving well. Why? The big dog who's getting the big treats doesn't want to fall out of favor and not get any treats. And um, even though dogs getting the small treats, one dog gets treats more frequently and the other dog less frequently. So what this has done, the inequality, is it has created some very well-behaved dogs. Now another example of inequality. This is a human example. So I go to Taekwondo. In Taekwondo, there's, there's two instructors and there's a bunch of other students, all of which are much younger than me. I'm 65 and the other students are uh, generally 20 years old or less. That's just the way it is. And so at the end of class, what I did was I gave the mother of one of the kids a candy and thanked her very much for helping with me with some information I needed and she says oh thank you very much then I gave one candy to uh, another girl in class who had helped me uh, during class and then there was a 13 year old boy who was really helpful and I called him over at the end of class and I gave him two chocolates now Everyone saw that he got two chocolates and they only got one, those two. And then everyone else got no chocolates. <laughs> so he says, oh, thank you for the chocolates. And these are not just any old chocolate. These are cookies and cream, Hershey's Kisses. And so when he got these chocolates, his, wife, his mother looked at him and said, oh, you got two chocolates. He said, oh, really? I got two chocolates? And then I said, yes. He is special. Well, the whole class, even the instructor, they just fell out laughing. Now, had I given everyone two chocolates or given everyone one chocolate, it would not nearly have been as much fun. And we all had a, just a, a lot of fun and a very good laugh. And so try that. Try some inequality in your life. You know, let people know, hey, you, two for you. You, one. You, nah, none. It'll work out great. People will like it. Now you'll say, well, Jennifer, that's really cold and uh, we have to be equal. Okay, so you have a lady. There's two guys. One of them's her husband. One's not. Should she treat them equally? No. <laughs> Otherwise, what would it mean to be a husband? So what we have to do is extend this inequality to more areas of our life and clearly giving people at least clearly giving them positive feedback when they do something that adds to your happiness or increases uh, your quality of life. So very important uh, inequality. Yes. That brings us to questions. Yay, questions. Let's see what we got. Oh, I'm getting ready to do the turpentine with sugar for parasites. If I get vitality capsules, is it safe to take after I do turpentine or should I be taking it before the turpentine? If you're taking it before in terms of 
taking it to get three poops in order to get ready for the turpentine and continue taking it while you're doing the turpentine or whatever you need in order to maintain the bowel movements. Alright, what else we got here? <laughs> I absolutely love your program every week. Thank you for your show. My question is, my son has a calcium deposit in his saliva gland under his tongue. Doctor wants to put him under anesthesia and remove it. Uh, can we have your advice? Okay, so if the deposit is small and not painful, ignore it. That's number one. If it is painful, or you somehow don't want to ignore it because maybe it's too big, then what causes this uh, calcium deposit is equality of pH. So the pH in the, in the um, mouth should be 5. You can buy a pH strip, strip, put it in his mouth, and you'll see that his mouth pH is either much lower than 5, like say 2 or 3, or it's much higher than 5, like say 6 or 7. So whatever direction it is, you need to correct his diet by going in the opposite direction. So if his pH is too low, like acid, he needs to eat more um, alkaline foods or less acid foods. If his, if his uh, pH is too high, he needs to eat more acid food. But you can solve this very easily by just changing all of his liquids to water, because water is a very balancing um, pH. So it'll balance his pH out to what he really needs. So give him um, water. I recommend distilled water. Distilled water has a pH of 5, which just so happens to be the pH of the mouth, the optimal, optimal pH for the mouth. So give, put him on water as his only beverage. And then you can give him uh, regular food. And once you check the pH strip, you will see what the problem is. And you can look at the food that he's eating and see which food is safe as too acidic, which food is too acidic. Maybe he has a high sugar or high candy diet. There you go. Okay, I believe. Yep, that is it for today. Okay, uh, so today's topic, inequality, definitely can save your life. So, as always, think happens.